They say about 1600 BC, that was a long time ago, they say about 1600 BC, the people of Israel were slaves in Egypt. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph had lived in Canaan, and ultimately they ended all down up in Egypt. Their descendants, where Pharaoh made them slaves. For 400 years, they did the work of Pharaoh, building big, big temples and maybe even a few pyramids. Although I think the pyramid, the primary pyramids were already there. But at one point, God hears their cry and sends Moses, and Moses comes down and takes the people of Israel out of slavery. And on the night before they leave, God says to Moses, everybody takes a lamb, and you're going to butcher the lamb, you're going to roast that lamb, and you're going to take the blood and paint the doorpost and the lintel of your house with the blood of that lamb. Because tonight, God says, the angel of death will come and, and, and every firstborn will die, whether it's the firstborn of Pharaoh or the firstborn of a slave or the firstborn of their cattle. Every firstborn will die, except where there is blood on the doorpost and the lintel and the angel of death will pass over that house. For centuries, the Jewish people, after they gained their freedom, for centuries, they remembered this meal of freedom and they celebrated how God saved them from slavery. So here we are tonight. Jesus and his disciples also go up in the upper room into a second floor room to celebrate the meal they've been celebrating. It's like Thanksgiving. You know, we have this image of, of the Last Supper being Jesus and a bunch of guys on this side of the table. You know, da Vinci did a beautiful job of painting that picture. But Passover is like Thanksgiving or Christmas. The whole family is gathered. Kids are running around, and, and everybody is eating, and it's an awesome, joyous time. At some point in that meal, though, Jesus gets up and washes the disciples' feet. At some point in the meal, Jesus says, okay, if you want an elevator speech of what it means to be Christian, if you want to know just a little bit that's really at the key of who we are, it's this. Be a servant. Love others to the point that you wash their feet, even those feet that are dirty or gnarled or in pain. Wash their feet. Care for the person, even those who just kind of like are obnoxious or rude or unkind or on a difficult, different political party. Wash their feet. Show the love that I have for you in the way that you care for others. Be a servant. I confess to you, my brothers and sisters, that sometimes I'm all right with that. Sometimes I'm not. And my guess is, well, it's more than a guess, sometimes your servanthood is pretty good. And sometimes it's not. Fair? But here's the key. Jesus says, no matter what, I haven't let go. No matter what, I have not stopped serving. No matter what, here's how we grow into what it means to be disciples, making disciples, learning how to serve and how to love. And then, now remember, it's Thursday, so we know we're on this side of the story. We know what's going to happen next. But at the, then Jesus takes a bread, the bread of the Passover, and he breaks it and he blesses it and says, this is my body. He identifies his crucified and risen body with the bread. And he takes the wine. This is my blood. We as Lutherans, we as Lutherans believe that Jesus is really present in the bread and wine. We don't know how. We're not going to make a decision. We're not going to make up plans. But we believe that when he says, take and eat, this is my body, he's really there. And that's the gift. It's also becoming a gift that we can share with Catholics and Methodists and Episcopalians and all sorts of other denominations who are finally ready to say, yep, we say the same thing. So here we are tonight. And there's a little bit of pain just in this community. Uh, 
Willie's not back, is he? Nope, so Willie had to go take care of his dad who fell. And that just, you know, just what does that mean? So there's a little bit of pain in, in that, in what the future might hold for that. We also come, Ava's going to receive First Communion, and her awesome great-grandmother, uh, Mary Vessel, was uh, placed in God's care and keeping today. And so whereas that's really good for Mary, it's also a loss in our community, right? But it's also how God's hands just continue to wrap around us, how God's hands take all the stuff of the world and grant us mercy and hope and peace and the circle of life that continues on. God always serves us with grace. St. Paul in the, in the book of Philippians said, this is who Jesus was. He emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself, even to the point of death on the cross. So when we are here tonight, we focus on the Lord whose life and whose giving and whose grace and whose servanthood went all the way to his death so that he could show God, us how much God loves us and so that we also can serve. Part of the takeaway I have for tonight in the foot washing is the, is the down and dirty goodness of serving. Uh, several of you have been to Honduras. When I was in Honduras this last time with Darla and crew, you know, we were able to feed the hungry and clothe those who didn't have enough and bring fresh water to those who had filthy water. And it was a step in the servanthood. But as important as that was, we don't only have to go there, right? In our own families, in our own homes, in this community, up across the tracks in downtown Toledo, wherever there are people, we're called to serve. And then tonight also, we get to share in this little bit of bread and in this little bit of wine where Christ says he is present. And in this little bit of bread and little bit of wine, we know that we get to physically taste the grace of God's presence. In this little bit of bread and wine, I am forgiven. I know that forgiveness. And I resell that, I, I, that life that comes from Jesus so that more and more we serve and become more and more like Jesus. In this little bread and, bit of bread and wine, we get to commune with those of us in these pews, in this Bethlehem wall. We get to commune with this community, but it's not only this community. It's Christians on, in all the rest of Pumberville and all the rest of Northwest Ohio and all around the world who are celebrating tonight God's grace. And it's not just those who are living. Somehow, we sing with the angels and those who have died, and we rejoice with those who feast in God's presence. All of this gets wrapped up in a little bit of bread and a little bit of wine, feeding us so we become a bit more like Jesus. So here's what's next. Sometime during the meal, Judas gets up and leaves to go betray Jesus. Jesus and the disciples leave. They go down a ravine and up to the Garden of Gethsemane where they pray and they, the guys fall asleep while Jesus earnestly doesn't want to go through what's coming up next. In fact, it, the Bible says he, it's like his sweat is dropping like, like drops of blood. But then Judas arrives at last with the soldiers and they arrest Jesus and take him away. That night, he is at the home of Annas and Caiaphas all night uh, through a mock trial. And early in the morning, he's taken to Pilate. And Pilate doesn't want to crucify him, but he's bowing to the wishes of the leaders, of the Jewish leaders. And Pilate puts the crown of thorns on his head and they flog him 30, uh, 39 times. And then they send him out to be crucified. Nine o'clock in the morning till about three in the afternoon, Jesus hangs and suffers where I should die. And he's buried. And Saturday comes. And it's silent. But we 
know that Sunday's coming. We know it's not the end. So that even when we die, it's not the end. I've got a t-shirt. I've been baptized. I've already died. So when it comes to my death, it's the second time. And I'll wake up to see Jesus face to face. We're walking into this important week. We're walking into this important presence of a God who continually gives of himself and says, I love you. I love you. I love you. Sometimes it has, doesn't get through the thick skull, but the reality is God says again, I love you.